Hey guys, what's up? Um, unfortunately, I live in an area where we got a couple feet of snow every winter. Not right now, but um, there will be no disc golf outside for me for the next three months. So instead of just playing football and whatever, playing PlayStation or stuff, I just thought I might do a video. And recently I've seen a lot of posts of uh, how gyro technology works. Does it work? Um, you know that stuff because it looks like other companies are trying to get into the multi-component um, disc market as well. So I thought I would do this video, try and explain it to you, how it works, if it works and stuff. Um, I'm not a studied physicist, I do have a master's in engineering, but um, it's been a while since I've done stuff like that. But um, it should be fine. Um, if anyone is a studied physicist and has got some improvements for me, then let me know. Uh, otherwise, um, it's just an approximate calculation to just help you, you know, show to your friends that always say, oh, MVP is just a gadget, doesn't work. Show them to those people and if anyone asks, you can also show them this video. And yeah, enjoy. Okay, um, I'm sitting in my warm room again now. And, um, well, English is not my native language, so I hope I got all the correct terms, like words for all that physics stuff and I had to write myself a text that I'm gonna read so sometimes it might sound a little strange but just ignore that it's yeah um, I'm also not a graphic artist either so uh, you're gonna have to deal with some more or less professional paint graphics here um, yeah let's start with what MVP does with its discs um, plastic isn't just plastic uh, as a disc golfer you all know that there are various kinds of it Plastic can be modified in endless ways, like different softness types, elastic properties, the density of the materials, all that stuff. And what MVP does is using a standard density plastic in their discs cores and a heavier, I, I guess, modified plastic for the rims to make them more dense to move the mass away from the center of the disc, which is the rotational axis. Um, we'll come back to that later. With a Frisbee, you got two main forces to consider. First of all, the lift that is generated to keep the disc in the air. Uh, it works the same way like the wings of an aeroplane. Uh, this, however, is not the targeted area. Um, MVP does uh, target another effect, which is that the disc's flight is being stabilized by its rotation. Um, much the same like riding a bike. The faster the wheels of the bike turn, the more stable and straight the wheels are turning, and the bike is staying upright. Everyone who has tried riding a bike without hands on the wheel uh, will know that it's easier when you're going faster. Um, so if you threw the disc without any spin you would never get into a state where a constant lift could be generated because it would wobble so bad if you could even you know get it without flipping over and stuff. So um, you also have some other physical effects on discs that generate the turn and the fade characteristics but that's a different chapter and it's got nothing to do with it. Um, anyway the rotation of a disc around its center, as you can read here, is characterized by its moment of inertia. As Wikipedia describes it, the moment of inertia, otherwise known as the angular mass or rotational inertia, of a rigid body is a tensor that determines the torque needed for a desired angular acceleration around a rotational axis. It depends on the body's mass distribution and the axis chosen, with larger mom moments requiring more torque to change the body's rotation. The moment of inertia can be defined by the equation of I equals the integral of R squared multiplied with dm. Um, this means that you can basically divide any given rigid body into the tiniest of parts that you can imagine, multiply the mass of any specific tiny part with its square distance to the rotational axis and then add all of those up. This is what the equation, this integral thing means. Um, it's basically just a sum over every of those tiny parts that you would have to um, divide the body into. Um, as you can see, because the mass is multiplied with the distance to the rotational axis squared, moving weight away from the axis increases the moment of inertia significantly. For an easy example, take a hammer on its grip, try to rotate it by using a wrist. The majority of the hammer's weight has a big distance to the rotational axis, which is your wrist. Um, and you will feel that it's well f fairly difficult but if you turn the hammer around it still has the same overall weight so you didn't change that but the majority of it is now very close to your rotational axis now it's way easier to accelerate and also decelerate the rotation 
because as the moment of inertia is defined up in, in the equation, um, the distance to the axis is much smaller now. Um, <clears throat> this also means that the rotation isn't as stable as it would be the other way around, because the higher the moment of inertia, the more stable the rotation is. Um, now, we're coming back to dividing a certain rigid body into very tiny elements. <clears throat> if it's perfectly rotationally symmetrical, you can divide it into very tiny volume rings to simplify the cal calculation. Um, it's, it's just a mathematical trick which simplifies the calculation. <laughs> um, now, this is where the key part about how the MVP gyro technology works starts. And we will try and calculate it. To do that, we want to find the center of mass of the cross-sectional area of the disk, as you can see here. Um, in this case, the center of mass equals the average of how far the mass of the body is away from the center. So instead of using that equation with I equals integral of blah blah blah, um, by finding the center of mass, you just say that this is the average of distance away from the center, uh, which, you know, counts for every piece of mass then, and you can multiply this one squared with the mass of the whole body. So what gyro, ne gyro technology does is move this center of mass outward and thus creating a higher moment of inertia for the disk. Um, <clears throat> we can make an approximate calculation of the amount of this effect by just disregarding the core of the disk um, as it only has a small part of the disk's weight and it's not as far away as the rim from the center so it, it's just a very small part and uh, we just we just ignore that. Um, <clears throat> to also simplify the calculation, we use a triangle shape for the rim. Um, the exact amount of the gyro effect varies from wing shape to wing shape anyway, so there is no use in calculating it to the very most precise. Well, then there's some more calculating and so on. I also put in one fifth for the coordinate of the trapezoid center of mass for all of you that you know know a little more about that stuff. I know that I did this. Um, I know that you you got some formularies that have formulas for every center of mass for uh, you know given objects, um, and I know that should be 22 120ths in this case, but um, I thought because we're using a triangle shape instead of a little more rounded disc golf wing shape, this should compensate a little for it. So you know we're doing an approximate calculation anyway. We're not trying to calculate you know a rocket to the moon or whatever. So it's precise enough. Um, anyway, after we calculated both center of masses with and without gyro, we take the distance of them to the center of the disk depending on different rim sizes like putter, mid-range driver, square them and take the percentage difference. Now, this is actually the amount that we have just calculated for how much the MVP and Axiom gyro technology increases the moment of inertia of a disk. So as you can see, um, it's probably not as much as you, have, you might have imagined. However, if you think about it, a disk changes its flight characteristics significantly if you break it in over a couple months just by throwing it, having it hit a tree or similar stuff. Um, I don't mean bending or warping the disk, but just little nicks and dings on the rim. Um, you know, and it flies different from when it was new, and that's less than 4%. Or back when Prodigy came out with their first run of the D-Series and you had hugely different flight shapes only because of the different colors of the disc because the color pigment changes the cooling behavior when the disc is molded. Um, all those things are most likely not about 4% in difference to a disc but for a thrower they can mean day and night. I mean everyone who's thrown a disc knows it. Everyone who has tried to get a backup disc also knows it how different you know basically the same disc can be. Um, or think about someone who throws 400 feet for 4% 4 more distance would mean 416 feet which might make the difference between having to throw a difficult S-curve shot or a safer flat to fade on a specific hole for him. Um, so to sum up what we've learned, uh, the gyro technology does make a difference. It is not just cool looking or a gadget or something to set MVP apart from other brands. It also has an effect on the disc. Um, it's roughly between 1 and 4% harder to get the disc to spin the same speed because of its higher moment of inertia. Um, to me though that isn't a problem because the amount of spin that you can generate on a disc is limited by your body by your body parts anyway. You know, like you're not gonna create inf an infinite amount of snap with your wrist and arm. So I don't have any problem with it and you're not gonna feel it basically. So 
Um, I think you can get a gyro disc to spin the same as a regular golf disc. The real benefit though comes when the disc's rotating, uh, when the disc's rotation is being slowed down by the friction caused by the airflow around the disc. Um, the moment of inertia of a gyro disc is 1 to 4% higher than a comparable regular disc. So the rotation slows down, so the, the rotation of an MVP disc slows down 1 to 4% slower because it just has that much more energy. This means that it will get pushed forward longer and not start fading as early because the rotation is not gonna slow down as fast. Um, another thing as you can notice is due to the more consistent rotational speed of the disc, like over the time of its flight, and um, because the increased stability of the rotation of it, MVP discs do not show as much of an S-shaped flight pattern as turn and fade are also reduced. One thing to consider though is that the shape of a disc itself can make a huge difference. What we've just calculated would be applicable if you had identically shaped discs, one with a gyro rim and one without it. For example, take a Discraft Buzz, uh, it's gonna fly pretty similar to an Axis from MVP, but you could only compare them 100% if the Axis would be identically shaped to a Buzz or vice versa. Um, a couple of last words from my experience with MVP discs. Um, MVP has made quite a few very flat top discs in the past, like the Switch, Resistor, Tesla, maybe also the Photon. Um, but those are still fairly straight flying for their shapes. Um, this is due to the gyro effect, um, but those flatter discs have the same amount of hard fade as comparable flat discs though. Um, depending on you like it or not, this might be you know, a nice addition to your game or not. Um, where I love the gyro head though most is with putters mid-ranges and those little higher profile drivers um, like my all-time favorite the Volt or the new 23mm distance drivers with which I think they've done a really great job. Um, I basically love three things about the gyro technology there. The first uh, is with turnover discs. I can trust their turn and they simply will not try to fade back as hard um, as comparable discs do while still being just as understable. The second thing is wind stability, because of the added stability to the rotation, the disc is just not as sensitive as comparable discs. Um, and the final thing is just how much further you can throw with an MVP disc compared to a similar stable regular disc. Um, by that I mean the following. I prefer for golf shots um, a very controllable line. Um, my favorite disc golf throw is a flat release, long straight drive with basically no flip at the beginning, no turn, no fade, nothing. Um, just with a decent but not exaggerated fade towards the end. Um, there are quite a few drivers that fit that slot for me, um, but since MVP came out with the Octane, uh, at least for me there's no competition anymore, um, because it's really amazing how much further it goes on that specific straight to fade line compared to other discs that did that throw for me. Um, the same can be said about my Volt. Um, it's amazing how far I can throw this thing on a dead straight throw without having to do the unco uncontrollable flip at the beginning of the throw. And for lower power throwers it might be an amp or catalyst for those shots, but I recommend to everyone at least ask a friend of yours who owns a couple of gyro discs to let you try them out. Um, yes, some of them need some getting used to, but if you find the right ones for you, um, you will most likely be amazed, I can almost guarantee, because it really does make a difference. Um, but, I mean, there is no point to say that gyro technology makes a disc better or worse. It depends on your feeling for a disc. Um, but it is fact that gyro discs are different than others, so I recommend try them out, you know, and then decide for yourself if you like them or not. Have fun throwing, guys.